Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Tuesday, April 14th, 2020, and I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaikin Analytics. Uh, head over to Twitter where you can find me. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaikin Analytics. Head over to chaikinanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email. Get a lot of the content for this show, as well as give you daily stock ideas. Hit your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities finished mostly lower in Monday's trading. Treasuries were weaker across the curve. The dollar was weaker on the yen, but stronger against the euro. Gold finished up a half of a percent, and WTI crude settled down 1.5% in some volatile trading after the weekend's OPEC plus production deal. At the sector level, discretionary led by Amazon, tech, consumer services outperformed, REITs, financials, and utilities were your laggards. As we get to the desk this morning, futures are higher by about 1%. Asian markets were higher overnight, led by Japan and China. European markets are higher as well. Treasuries are slightly weaker. The dollar is weaker on the major crosses. Gold is off 10, uh, 10 basis points. WTI crude down 2.1%, adding to that loss from yesterday. So here's the structure of the S&P 500. Really no change. I guess if you want to be optimistic about things, uh, you can say we tried to push lower and actually rally to close in the top half of the day. We still are wrestling with the 2,800 level. To me, 2,800 to 2,900, those are your key points. To the upside, that is a resistance zone as far as I am concerned. It is a resistance zone within the context of a bear market rally as far as I am concerned. We are below the declining 200-day, below the declining 50-day. So for the intermediate and long term, to me, the trends are down. If you're a shorter term trader, the trends are up, right? Know your time frame. That's important, right? And don't flip-flop your time frame. You know, know yourself as a trader. Uh, markets are a uh, very, very expensive place to learn who you are as a person, uh, but you will learn quickly who you are as a person, uh, as well as who you are as an investor. So just own that, stay true to it. If you're a short-term trader, you know, use moving averages like the 10, the eight day and the 21 day. And you're, for your time frame, the trend is up. If you're an intermediate term trader or a longer term investor, for your time frame, the trend is down. Uh, we view the world from the intermediate term here at Chaken Analytics uh, based on our model. So for us, this is a rally within the context of a downtrend. Initial support, 2650, and then below that, 2450. Resistance, as we've been saying, 2800 to 2900. RSI is in bearish ranges below 60. Chaken money flow is bullish, but fading. Taking a look at our market in a minute now. What are we writing about? Uh, well, we've stalled at the 50% retracement level. Remember this mark, yes, from yesterday, right around 2800 is also the 50% retracement level of this entire move down. Banks kick off earnings season today. JP Morgan on the tape uh, with their print. And obviously numbers are messy and going to be messy across the board. Uh, what seems to be jumping out at people so far is a big reserve uh, for provisions for loan losses. That's what you would expect, as they do uh, expect uh, a fairly sizable recession. Uh, all eyes and all ears will be on Jamie Dimon during the conference call. Tech, healthcare, and staples are relative leadership. Materials and energy rally. We're wondering if that will last. Futures point to a higher open today. Taking a look at the major indices now from a power bar perspective. Dow down one and a quarter yesterday, one bull, six bears. S&P 500 down 90 basis points, 24 to 158. NASDAQ, big outperformer. A lot of strength in large cap growth. Remember what we've been saying in a slowing growth world. If you've been listening to me for any length of time, you know my view here. In a slowing growth world, you favor growth. And in particular, large cap growth, right? Think big tech, big healthcare, okay? Big comm services. Take a look at the names. NASDAQ up 1.1% yesterday, 14 to 26 bulls to bear. Small caps resume their trend of underperformance. Bonds down tick, sending yields higher. According to the Chaikin Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bearish. Taking a look now at our stock of the day, and this is not auto-generated. I'm just highlighting it. It's JP Morgan. There's no two ways about it. They're going to report today, or they are on the tape. Uh, all eyes are going to be on Jamie. Uh, obviously, Jamie is uh, one of the more high-profile CEOs. Uh, in the country, J.P. Morgan as one of the largest banks in the world and in the country, obviously uh, has their finger on the pulse of what's going on in particular uh, with, you know, consumers, right? Big lending book. Pay attention to what J.P. Morgan has to say today. If you're an investor in this marketplace, 
Um, you should be listening to the JP Morgan conference call today. I can, t I can look up quickly what time that'll be taking place. But, uh, you know, if you're an investor in the marketplace, you know, their calls at 830, uh, that overlaps with this call, obviously, but, uh, you can always tune in for the replay. Uh, you can get the transcript as well. Pay attention to what Jamie Dimon has to say today. Taking a look at our sector tracker now. Movement of the ma major sectors over the last five days. Materials top of the list. There's even a bit of a rebound in materials. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if it's going to last. Uh, maybe there's this view out there that we could get some inflation in the market because of everything that the Fed is doing. Um, you know, that's an interesting view. Uh, I think it's, you know, kind of, you know, one-dimensional thinking. Uh, in terms of just saying, well, the Fed is printing money and they're buying assets, so we're going to get inflation. Folks, that hasn't been the case for 12 years. The Fed's been printing money for 12 years, and we haven't seen any high levels of inflation in the real economy, right? Which would lead me to believe that materials should start rallying. Uh, I think if you want to play that game and pay attention to the inflation, um, you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not paying attention to the velocity of money. Go back to your econ classes and remember velocity of money. The Fed can print all they want. If that money is not flowing through the system, it's hard to get the kind of inflation that uh, some people think we're going to get. Real estate and energy round out the top three. Fins, discretionary utes, and comms are middle of the road. Healthcare, tech, industrial staples at the bottom of the list. Trends that I like the best in the market from a relative perspective for intermediate term investors. I like tech. I like healthcare. I like staples. And... I like comm services, but they're trying my patience. Uh, industry and folks today, NYSE Tech Services. Speaking of owning growth, uh, over the past six months, New York uh, NYSE Technology subsector has outperformed the S&P 500 by almost 12%. Weak ratio here, but it's in the top of the list. Number three of 21, of, uh, 21 subsectors. Right, we want to avoid shop bookings and techs in there are other names there that we want to look at and take a look at this uh, chart here, right? Outperforming. This is an area of the market where we want to go looking for long ideas and no surprise, it's tech, okay? Um, that just makes a lot of sense to me. So we have a neutral plus rating, outperforming the market, weak trend below the trend line, but I think we want to be paying attention here to well, what's happening with, um, with this group, right? This is, you know, this is your group. This is your growth trade, folks. Taking a look at what's trending now, yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers are gainers and losers. Netflix, positive mention in Barron's. Here's your large cap tech and large cap growth, folks. Netflix, positive mention in Barron's, right? About uh, subscribers, up 7%. Amazon, nothing company specific there, up 6%. AMD, you see a trend here, folks? Big growth stocks. Top of the list, Newmont, NEM, rallying with gold, also traded at a 52-week high in PXD, caught an upgrade. Stock has a bearish rating here at Cheek and Analytics, but it was up 4% yesterday. On the loser side of the board, uh, travel, lodging, and leisure remains a uh, bearish theme. Royal Caribbean down 17%, NCLH down 13%, Hog, that's Harley-Davidson, down 9%. Transdime uh, down 9%, nothing company specific, to drive trading there. And Caterpillar uh, caught a downgrade at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Uh, and that was enough to send that stock lower by nearly 9%. So it just uh, continues to be a big theme. Uh, big themes continue to play out in the marketplace. Um, and we need to be, con and we continue to be focused on them. All right, finally, let's dive into the charts now. Tech remains relative leadership. And we're looking at the XLK here on an absolute basis. Uh, XLK, uh, I've kind of made some adjustments to my charts here. I've tried to do the best that I can to replicate the charts that we look at at Cheek and Analytics here um, for this show to kind of, so you can see what I'm seeing when I talk about what's going on here. Now, XLK is one of the leading areas of the market from our process perspective. If I take a look at XLK within Chaikin Analytics, it has a neutral plus Chaikin Power Gauge rating. That's because it's below our declining trend line. Uh, overbought, oversold stocks. It's the fund is overbought, but what I like is the relative strength. And I'll just use your scooter, the S&P, uh, the scooter here at StockCharts.com. 
as a measure of relative strength. And uh, you can see it's one of the leading areas of the market. So what I see here is, you know, an area of the market that held up relatively well as the market sold off. Shake and money flow is bullish. Now, do I want to go chasing things that are overbought after a 25% rally off the lows in the market? Not really. Right? I want to stick to a process. Um, but what I want to be doing is doing the work, right? Where do I want to be looking for long ideas such that when the market's overbought, oversold or closer to oversold, when funds, when stocks are oversold, where do I want to be looking for ideas? I think you want to be, I, I think you want to be looking in tech. I've been saying it for months. And, you know, if you'll notice tech held up better than the overall market. So if you were positioned, even in the downturn, if you were positioned in what was leadership heading in, you actually outperformed, right? Assuming you had no risk management rule at all, other than to own what's outperforming. If you owned what was outperforming heading into the top and just wrote it, did nothing. You still did better than the overall market, right? So that's, that's the importance of relative strength, right? The areas of the market that we had been highlighting as bullish going into this have held up better coming out. Another one that we've liked is healthcare, right? Same thing, right? XLV has held up much better than the overall market. And what's great is it's continuing out to perform, continuing to outperform even as the market rebounds. So outperforming does better on the way down and outperforms on the way up. Folks, that's how you outperform the market. You focus on what's outperforming. And by owning what's outperforming, you continue to outperform the market. It's not rocket science. A lot of people can't get around it, right? They want to go bottom fishing in energy, right? That's a hard game to play. Good for you if you're going to play it. It's not our process. It's not how we look at the world. A lot of people like to do it though, right? People want to buy those cruise lines and they want to buy those casino stocks, okay? If, you're, if you can trade them quick, that's great. Fundamentals are horrible. Trends are horrible. You're trading counter trend. We prefer to get on the right side of the relative strength because the relative strength is where the big money is measured. Institutional investors who are measured to a benchmark have to outperform on a relative basis. So, so what are they looking for? They're looking for the stocks that are outperforming in the areas of the market that are outperforming. So we want to get on the right side uh, of that trade. So healthcare is a top sector. Technology remains a top sector for us. Um, areas of focus. Comm services kind of middling a little bit. We like it. And Staples is a little bit of a defensive play. Now, we are obviously watching the bond proxies closely. And if you're taking our 14-day draw, you're getting my note. And every Tuesday, I'm laying this out for you, sector by sector, right? Where we kind of highlight something that looks interesting to us. Material's kind of bouncing here. Now, I'm not convinced yet. It's still an ugly group from a from a cheek and power bar perspective, right? And, you know, it's a, it's a neutral ETF here at Cheek and Analytics, no bulls, 14 bears, right? A lot of work to do, a lot of wood to chop up here. Uh, but you do have a rally and you do have a bit of a turn here. Take a look at the, uh, the scooter, it's stock charts. And it's kind of broken topside, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, something I'm gonna keep an eye on. I am not in the inflation camp. Uh, I'm not one of these people who thinks that rampant money pr printing is going to produce inflation in the economy only because it hasn't so far. Again, as I've said, you need to watch money velocity, right? A lot of people are focused on the Fed's balance sheet and it has ballooned. There's no two ways about it. Um, but money velocity has not been there. Pull up a simple chart of M2 velocity. Uh, or if you need to dig into your econ books, uh, before you do that, go ahead. But M2 velocity has not been there. So if you're looking for inflation, watch velocity. That's going to wrap us up for today. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive. Take us for a 14 day trial. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with stockcharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.